Let's look at some of the other functions. Try while and try until. Make use of the while and until loops, respectively. These are the first loops that we have encountered. Loops, unlike if and case, which run their code just once, loops run their code multiple times. That is, they run their code while or until a certain condition is met. It is possible to write equivalent while and until loops. I've done so here. Notice the condition of the while loop. While the value stored at reply, which we get right here from the user input, while that value is not equal to the empty string. And then we re-execute that prompt. Same down here. Prompt the user for input until the value stored at reply equals the empty string. Keep prompting the user for input. So notice the only difference between the while and until loop, besides the use of while and until, is the negation in the while loop. And if you think about it, this makes sense. While a certain condition is not met, continue executing the code. Which is another way of saying, until the condition is met, keep executing the code. Let's take a look at how these work. Choose three for a while. There. When the user input was nothing, that is, when I hit enter without entering anything, the while loop stopped executing and the program stopped prompting the user for input. The same thing will happen for the until loop. The behavior is exactly the same. Now, there's still one more we haven't tried. Let's try the behavior of the for loop.
Okay, the code did not keep executing as it did for the while and until loops, but something happened for every word in the input, and that something will happen for every word in the input regardless of how many words are there. We'll try it again. So regardless of the amount of input, regardless of how many words are in the input, the same code is being executed for each one of those words, for each one of those words. So once again, we know from the code below, the main code of this script, that what we just executed was the code here in try4, in this function called try4. So there are some differences here worth talking about. This time, when prompting the user for input, we use the A flag which stores the input to an array and we're saving that array in an array variable which we are calling ARR. Now, for word, and you could think for each word or for every word in the variable stored at ARR, or specifically for every variable, for every value stored in every index of the array at ARR. So for every value, right, and we're representing the value by this variable called word. So for every word stored in the array, echo the value stored at word. And that's exactly the behavior we saw. If the user inputs eight words, each one of those words is output to standard out on its own line. And then that's it. So the four loop is considered a loop as well, but unlike while and until, its logic, its operation is not dependent upon a certain condition. Rather, the for is simply looping over each possible value. Now, if you were writing a C-style for loop, which is different from what you are seeing here, a C-style for loop does include a condition to be checked. And in fact, the behavior is somewhat similar to a while loop in that case. So, if we are checking a condition, then while or until are generally the kinds of loops that we want to be using if we're checking a condition over and over again. If we have a set of data points for which we want to perform the same code on each point, then a for loop is probably the better option, generally speaking. 
and it is possible to break out of any of these loops while, until, or for. So, with that capability, you may not want to run a for loop, for example, over every single data point. Maybe only until you find the data point that you're looking for, in which case inserting a break inside the for loop would be a good option. So I hope that this video has made you think a little bit more about what control structures you may want to use at any time. Remember if and case these are code these are control structures that are checking for conditions at one point in time with case being really kind of a special case of if while and until these are loops that execute the same kind of code over and over while a certain condition is met or not met or until a certain condition is met or not met. For, unless we're talking about a C style for loop, for is meant to run the same code over a certain number of data points. You may not know the number of data points that you're running the code over, but for certain it's a finite number of data points. As we said, case and if. Case may be a special case of if. And until, we saw how until can simply be rewritten as while. And in fact, as we move on into looping in Python, it is control structures in Python, you'll find that case and until are not options. Python has if, Python has while, Python has for. It does not have case and until. And part of the reason for that is, as we saw here, case can be rewritten as if and until can be rewritten as while. These are included in Bash to make life easier for the programmer in some cases.